Hello everyone, welcome to William in the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Brock. Brock is from Los Angeles in California in the USA. So let's see what Brock has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hello. Hello, Brock. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well. Thanks so much for taking the time this morning for the interview. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So tell me, how is your day going so far? My day is is pretty good. It's just like, uh, you know, I just woke up, made some breakfast, had some coffee, sent some emails, and now I'm talking to you. <laughs> Are you more of a day or night person? Oh, man, that's a really good... I. I think mornings are my favorite time of the day, mm -hmm. but but I also do like to stay up late. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm I know I'm kind of contradictory that way, but I do I do my my morning routine is very very important to me. Um, but I but I do kind of I tend to stay up until about one one thirty. Wow. So, yeah. And where are you based? Where are you from, Brock? So I live in Los Angeles. I live in North Hollywood, California, and uh, but I was born and raised in Dover, Ohio. Wow! So, and why did it change from Ohio to California? I went to college. So so my father moved us to Florida when I was fifteen. Mm -hmm. So I I went to, I finished up my senior year of high school in Florida. And, I st and then I went to college in Orlando. So I studied theater in, in Orlando for four years. And then after college, I moved to New York. And I was in New York from 2012 to 2020. Okay. And then, you know, COVID hit. And so I went back to my hometown in Ohio, stayed with my parents for a little bit. And I was in Ohio for two years. And then once COVID You know, once everything kind of slowed down, the world started opening. That's when I moved to Los Angeles, just because I, I just I had done New York and I just didn't really have a desire to to go back. I just wanted to, uh, you know, I realized that this was my this was my opportunity to get out and go go to LA. I see. And before um, leaving there in LA, have you been there before? Like, I spent some time there before. Yes, I had visited many times. Okay, so it's kind of familiar for you, the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All my honestly, I had more friends out in Los Angeles than I did in New York. So they were all just like, "Get out here, dude! What are you doing? What are you wasting time for? Come on out to LA." And I was like, "Okay, okay, okay." So I did. <laughs> live in New York and now live in LA. For you, what's the biggest difference between both cities? The biggest difference. Man, I guess just like having a car. That makes that's the biggest difference, and that makes all the difference. It's such a huge, important thing. And you know, in New York, you don't have a car, so everywhere as you're walking or on the subway, and you kind of feel trapped. Honestly, like it's it's hard because you know you you got the weekend, but it's like okay, well, how do we get out of the city? It's like expensive to you have to rent a car, you gotta take a train somewhere. It's it's almost it feels like you're trapped on the island, um, and. Uh, you can't just like get in your car and go somewhere. And so that's been such a lovely change. And that's what I'm used to because I'm, you know, from Ohio and Florida, we always had cars. And so while I was in New York, I never had a car, but coming to LA and having my car just feels like I can, it's just a, a, a certain feeling of freedom that's just absolutely lovely. I see. Okay, Brock, I was checking your profile and I could see that you're an actor, you are online coaching, you are into fitness. So walk me through a little bit about your journey. Well, when I was a kid, my father was a competitive bodybuilder. And so I watched him compete and I, you know, you would go to the gym with him. And so I always was interested in the gym and I was always interested in bodybuilding and, and, Uh, weightlifting but I also really really love performing and so I would do I was always doing the school plays in middle school and high school and um, and so I was very involved in drama I, I I was the I was the president of my drama club my senior year and uh, I uh, you know went to college for acting but at the same time I was always 
still going to the gym and staying in shape. So it's really just, they, they, the two of them have both been big parts of my life, acting and being in, you know, being in shape. I see. All right. So for the career, for the journey, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your journey. Okay. And about your joys in life as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So before we start our journey, within the magic box, so would you like to tell me something interesting about yourself? You want me to tell you something interesting about myself? Yeah. Oh, God. Maybe something not many people know about you. I'm fluent in Spanish. Wow. That's mm -hmm. something. Wow. And why Spanish? I just took Spanish in high school and I, uh, I really enjoyed it. And so I just always spoke Spanish. And, you know, I went to high school in Florida. And so okay. a lot of you know, a lot of my friends were, you know, Cuban or Puerto Rican or Dominican. And so we were always like speaking with each other. And I just, I always knew that it was, it was very important to be able to, to speak another language. And so, um, yeah, so I, yeah, I, yo, yo puedo, puedo hablar español, puedo, eh, puedo, uh, eh, eh, pero uh, es difícil entender cuando se habla. Tú, tú tienes que hablarme como soy un joven, you know, no puedes hablar rápido. Okay. Uh, <laughs> pero, to, uh, despacio, por favor. Pero yo puedo decir lo que quiero. Is that right? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm from Brazil and Portuguese and Spanish is very similar. I understood oh my everything. God. No, I understood everything what he said. Okay, so I had, a, I was with a, a partner and my, my ex and he was Portuguese, he was Brazilian and he spoke Portuguese. I could not understand Portuguese for the life of me. It was so <laughs> tricky. I was like, why is it so difficult? Because Portuguese and Spanish are pretty similar. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting because, you know, it's from Latin. So for example, um, uh, for us, Brazilian Portuguese, we understand Spanish like 99%, yeah? The Spanish yes. people, they understand Italian very well. And Italian people, it's like a circle. Italian people, they understand Spanish. So for yes. example, um, if I hear Italian people talking, I, I don't understand word by word, but I know what they're talking about. Yes. Um, so Spanish for me is like when I hear everything you said, I understand everything. I understood yeah. everything what you said. But yeah. Spanish people, they understand better Italian. It's like a circle. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. you know. And it's like French as well. For example, the French grammar is very similar to Portuguese. For Even mm -hmm. more similar than the Spanish grammar. Can you imagine? Mm. But yeah, it's very similar, the verbs and everything. But for me, French, when I hear French, um, they, it's more difficult for me to understand what they're talking about. But th there are some words, that they use the same word just with different way of saying, accent, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like yeah. a circle. But Spanish for, yeah, for Brazilian people, for Portuguese, nine, let's say 90%, I understand. They speak very fast, but they understand very, very easy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to learn, I'm starting to learn French right now. My partner is French and I want to learn I want to learn French, so I, I have Babel on my phone, and I'm trying to. <laughs> you are changing you know, culture. Yeah. You are changing culture. Brazilian going to France now. You kind of explore a little yeah. bit. Yeah. The Latin. I know. <laughs> I know. Brock, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views? Ready? Certainly. Amazing. Welcome to Ilian and the Magic Box. So I've got All my right. best friend. of random fun questions. I'm just going to play a song now just for us to relax a bit before the first question, okay? Let's do it. All right, Brock. So before we start the game, during the join, if it comes up a question that you don't want to talk about some reason you don't want to answer, always can change, okay? Right. First question for you is, what is the biggest difference between you and your best friends? Oh, my God. The biggest difference between me and my best friends? Yeah. Oh, um, the biggest difference between me and my best friends? Uh, what a good question. Holy crap. <laughs> well, I think my best friends are um, a bit more emotionally intelligent 
than I am. And I try my best to be as emotionally intelligent as them. That's why they're my best friends because they are, they're so, um, their, their EQ is high. And I, I think like I go to them for advice and I go to them for help because I want to be, because they're calm and chill. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm a very, I'm a very fiery, passionate person. So I think the biggest, the biggest difference between me and my best friends is their, yeah. their calm, their, their calm demeanor and their <laughs> emotional intelligence. What's your star sign? I'm a Taurus. Oh, April or May? I'm a May 1st. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what's the biggest similarity? biggest similarity <sighs> um me my, myself and my best friends we are all very driven mm -hmm. and um we're all i'd say i'd say my best friends and i we all want to improve the world we want to leave the world better than when we found it your best friends, they are as well into fitness, like as you? No, no, not necessarily. No, um, you know, uh, yeah, my, my best, my, my circle of friends, um, not necessarily are, are they into fitness like I am, mm -hmm. but, uh, but they, but they still take care of themselves for sure. You know, whether they don't like, I, I don't only hang out with, you know, bodybuilders or anything like that. Um, I think, I think it's, it's good to have different perspectives and, you know, it's like, I don't sure. Like I have friends that have, are similar and have, yep. have that in common with me, but, but yeah, like my, my closest friends, I think, yeah, they're, um, they ask me for advice at the gym. I don't know if they take it, but you know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. I got a really, really, I have, I have a very, a very select few, few people that I really, really can trust with my life. Right. Next question. Let's do it. Right. Next question for you is, what's the most romantic thing someone has ever done for you? Oh, man. Oh, I can see a lot of things going on in your mind right now, like a lot of romantic things, yeah? <laughs> Uh, so I think it was actually pretty recent. Right. Um, I think this is the, the one that stands out in my head the most was, uh, a couple months ago, my, my partner and I were in Ohio and we were visiting my family mm -hmm. and at the time, and I was also prepping for a movie. I was trying, I was getting ready to, to film a movie. And this movie was very, very important to me because I've been working on producing this movie for many, many years. And unfortunately, the writer's strike put a squash on our movie. So with the writer's strike happening, um, it, it, um, it didn't happen. So I was very, very, very sad. I was depressed and and my partner could see how sad I was and he gave me space and he gave me time to really just like kind of sit there with my feelings. And he, he left, he left the house and came back about an hour later and he brought me flowers and sushi and just put them on the table. And I, I just started like, I just started crying and it was like the most perfect thing that he could have done. And so that was honestly like, probably one of the most romantic things somebody's done for me to 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 take care of me and to let me know that I'm I'm gonna be okay and just to like to to let me know that they love me that was very 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 special to me did you cry the most because of the flowers or because of the sushi <laughs> because of because no because of yeah <laughs> exactly yeah uh no it was like I cried just because it was just such a beautiful, a beautiful, it was just, just like a, a thing that you could be a simple gesture that just meant so much. 
Yeah, and people people who know us very well, they know how to do that somehow. You know what I mean? Could be, as I yes. said, it could be flowers. So she could be something that they just know it. You know, could be anything that's yeah. the okay. That's gonna somehow comfort their hearts somehow. So they they know they know how to to get there. Yeah, look you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very next, lucky. Next question. Let's do it. Hey Brock, before the next question, tell me what's the best joy of acting? What's the biggest, you know, pleasure of when you are, you know, uh, acting? I I think one of the best parts of acting is is when people that you love and people that you're close to see your performance. And they watch you doing what you do. Mm -hmm. That to me is the one of the best experiences. Just to, to 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 have you know something on TV, film, or so, like a movie that I've done or whatever, and to sit and watch it with my with my family and friends, and to see what they say. And they're always super supportive, and they always like love whatever you do. But that's honestly like that's the most rewarding part is to have people that you love in your life seeing your work, and you know acknowledging it that's very that's a very very big thing for me and the yeah. flip side the most challenging part well uh oh my gosh the most challenging parts um it can be a really it, it, it is it is a very very difficult business to be in you you are constantly comparing yourself to others you are always wondering if you're good enough, if you're talented enough, why didn't you book this job? Why did somebody else book this job? What did they do right? What did I do wrong? And you're, you know, you're constantly competing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a really, really difficult thing to come to terms with. And that's, um, that's, that, that has um, kind of makes you grow as a person. Mm -hmm. it, it forces you to grow as a person. Otherwise you'll, you'll crack and you'll fall apart. So you have to, do a lot of work in on yourself and you have to you have to really like understand who you are and what you bring to the table and know that there's so much of this that's out of our hands that we have no control over See. and it's very important it's very important to not have an opinion on something you can't control you don't need to have an opinion on something you can't control right so um it's very easy to get in your head and it's very easy to, to start comparing yourself to others. And that's the work you have to like, stop doing that. So that's the most challenging thing about this. Okay. Next question is if you could have dinner with anyone living or not, who that would be and why? I would like to have dinner. I would have loved to have dinner with. Uh, hmm. Nicole Kidman. Oh, one of my favorite actor actress for Me sure. Me too. Love her. I love her. Every movie that I see, I when I watch her, I see a different person. It's incredible how she can do it. It's incredible yeah. how. Have you seen Cold Mountain? Cold Mountain with uh, Cold Mountain. Oh, Mountain. I've, yeah, with, I've, I've seen parts of it. It's been a while now. It's been like about my goodness. Yeah. I remember watching. I said, "How's she gonna put this out? Like, how's she gonna come?" And she did it. I could see a different person there. And I remember like exactly one of my favorite movies. Anyway, why Nicole Kidman? Just same reason for you. I mean, she's just so beautiful. And she's so, she's such a beautiful actress. She's so good at what she does. And she, um, I think she's, I truly think like she embodies that old school Hollywood glamour. And mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of actresses today in today's generation that kind of remind us of those the, the the actresses back in the old the old days of Hollywood and I think she she really like she just is a, a goddess you know yeah and I've I've had a crush on her since I was six years old and I saw her in Batman and uh and I have just always been so inspired and in awe of her and oh. uh so yeah i just think she's i just, just like she's just the one stunning yeah <laughs> she's the one let That's me see it. that 
Okay, let's see. They are sitting now with the colleague Kidman in a table for dinner. What would be your first question to her? Oh man, I think I would I would ask her how she started. What you know, what it was like when she started acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very very curious about how how she she got into acting, the the real story and and. Uh, and what it was like because she wasn't she wasn't taken seriously as a young actress mm -hmm. she they they people I've, I've heard interviews where she said you know they didn't take me seriously and she was very very pretty so people thought that she wasn't a great actress and she just was like just watch you know yeah, yeah. just give, give me a, give me a minute and so i'm just so curious about how she overcame that and how she you know was able to change people's minds for sure yeah. next question brock let's do it yeah. right next question for you is what has been the lowest point of your life so i i know exactly what that is when i was 22 i was finishing up my senior year of college and I was very lost and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. And I was in a really, really abusive relationship. And I, um, I felt very unsafe and I was, um, I was in a dangerous situation and I, uh, I was just losing every sense of who I was. I just was like, I was just not, I was just like not um, staying true to myself. And uh, yeah, yeah. And so there was one night, there was one night where um, I, I was, I had to escape a very, very dangerous, violent situation with an ex partner. And so I thank God escape. I mean, honestly, like that night I thought I was going to die. And, uh, and I, I, I got out and I went home to my parents' house and <clears throat> I kind of like decompressed. This was in Florida. This was in, in Florida. I was, I was here and, and I drove, up to Ohio in my little car and I stayed with my parents' house for a couple months. And, and I just remember a friend of mine saying, you know, messaging me and just saying, Brock, what are you doing? Where are you? What's happening? Where are you going? Like, you're an actor. Remember who you are. Remember why you're doing this. Remember who you are. And that conversation really, really meant a lot to me. And it, it truly woke me up. And I was able to kind of wake up from this trance that I was in and to get out of this really bad situation and this really terrible mindset. Mm -hmm. And I eventually moved, I moved from there to New York and started my life in New York. And that really was like a, a, a great way to start my new chapter was to get out of this really crappy situation with a, with a really violent partner and um and to get out of the end and start my life in new york so that was that was the lowest point in my life and um and you know but we we all have that we all have those low points and um that was mine what was the when you think about now you know the place you are right now when you look back when what was the positive outcome or the positive message you took out of this toxic relationship that you had at this time you just mentioned now I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about what I'm looking for in relationships and what a red flag looks like and what, you know, like how to avoid violent people. Um, I learned to protect myself. I learned, um, you know, like, like I just, I learned a lot of valuable lessons from that really rough time. And also I wrote, um, I wrote a screenplay sort of based on that time period, loosely based on that time period. 
So I took, that was sort of like my own little version of therapy was to write about that and to take those experiences and to put them into uh, a film. So, so something positive came from it and people really connected with it and resonated with it. And so that's, that's the movie that we're trying to make right now. Have you forgiven this person? Yes. I don't, I don't, um, I don't really think it, I mean, damn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Have I really forgiven this person? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if I have. Okay. I'd like to I'd like to say that yes, I have forgiven this person. Um, but I still I, uh, yes, yes, I have. I have for I have forgiven this person mm -hmm. um not to their face. Like we don't speak anymore. But. I didn't like tell this person I forgive you, but um but I've I've let it go. Mm -hmm. Um I've absolutely let it go. I've, I was in therapy a little bit in my twenties and I talked about all the stuff that I went through and, um, and the, you know, I, I, my therapist was fantastic and really helped me frame a lot of this stuff in a, in a good way. And, um, and she did help me move on. Um, so yes, I, yes, I have, I have forgiven this person. I, I still think about it every once in a while when it comes up and I still, um, but it, but it doesn't, it doesn't affect me the same way it used to. That's it. So it's yeah, I can still, I, yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> Joking. Yeah, yeah. No, like, you're right. No, it's, you're right. It's like it does. It looks like it's affecting me. Um, no, 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 I, no, no, no. I think it's just you know, it's just feelings. I just just show real feelings. What I feel right now, and I can see that you are, you know, it, it's it's a uh, it's a journey. You know what I mean? It's a journey. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, but yeah, I I um, it was this was back. I was this was 12 years ago, mm -hmm. and um, and so of course, yes, of course, I moved on. Um, yeah, of course, I, I I still, I don't know where this person is or what they're doing, and it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the only thing you can do is just move on. Like, you cannot, you, you can't, you can't expect things from people. You can't expect an apology from somebody. You can't yep. wait around for something like that. You got to just make it, you got to feel that yourself. And so, um yeah, I don't like, I don't need anything from that person anymore. I don't, I got way too much good stuff in my life to even still like be, you know, worrying about all that stuff. Um, so, but yeah, like, but it is part of, it's a chapter in my book and. Yeah. And, know, I was, yeah. and I was about to say that and I'm sure right now you're somehow grateful for that as well because it made the person you are right now, for sure. So 100%. that's the 100%. Yeah. So that's the, the, the good parts. I'm sure at the time you, did, you didn't see it, but now when you are over it, you get okay. Now I understand why that happened to me, and I'm sure deep inside you are yeah. thankful for that person because somehow it, this person helped you to put the place where you are right now. Maybe if you didn't go through that, maybe you would be in a different place. You know what I mean? And you would be strong as you are right now. So yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. 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 That's what, that's exact. That's a, that's a really, really good way to put it. It's I'm very, I'm grateful for, uh, you know, all these things that I've been through because that's, that's why I'm here today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Better yeah. for another one. Yeah. Let's do it. Next one. Right. Before the next one, what's the biggest joy of doing online coaching or coaching people that are doing person as well. So tell me the biggest joy. Oh man, uh, just when when people really start to see changes in their bodies and they start to feel better, I, I it just it just makes me smile, you know, because I know how frustrating it is. I know how hard it is, and I know how difficult it can be, and uh, to to tr you know work so hard at the gym and to not see what you want and to not get the results that you want. So it is really really rewarding to to help people feel better and to look better and, and build that confidence. You know, I, I, a lot of my clients, 
really just like they like the the gym is like your health your physical well-being is so important and it just it it changes everything about you and it makes you just feel more confident it makes you feel better in every sense of the word and that's really really special to see people and to get the thank you notes and you know so it's a really beautiful thing to to be able to help people most of the clients they are, they are female or male i typically get a lot of males like okay. a lot of a lot of men a lot of men come to me looking to build muscle that's really what i specialize in but i'm i'm happy i've i've worked with women as well it's you know um i work with everybody okay next question for you is what do you miss the most from your childhood and why what do i miss from my childhood i guess i I miss Christmas the most. Sweet. Christmas when you were a kid is truly the most amazing time of the year. Yeah. To have two weeks off of school, to be out in the snow and to go to like have to Christmas parties at school and then to 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 wake up and have Christmas morning. It's it was such a, a a magical time. And as we get older, of course, that just it just doesn't feel the same. Uh but I Christmas is of course it's my favorite holiday and I I do try to like like my my family and I I I go every year back home to Ohio mm -hmm. for Christmas and I I like to, you know, get gifts for everybody and um but it just doesn't feel the same. It's not the same when you're 10 years old. It it's interesting because um as the 10 years old when you when you are a child the Christmas took so long to arrive like it you were expect the whole week, whole year. It felt like Now, a year. It, I know. It felt like know. like like December the month of December felt like <laughs> yeah. a whole year. And nowadays it just comes a blink of eyes. You blink eyes that's it Christmas again. Christmas again. It's like so fast. 100%. How was 100%. How was growing up as a gay boy back in Ohio? Um, I mean, it was rough, of course. Uh, you know, I, I was, I had struggled a lot. There was a lot of, you know, this was back in the '90s, and this was still there were, you know, a lot of a lot of um, ignorant stuff was being said, and it's a very different time now. But um, it was, yeah, it it had its challenges, mm -hmm. but, but I will say that, you know my my parents are so so supportive mm -hmm. um and it took them a little while to get there they didn't understand it right. and they you know we we had we had a few you know we we had we had our issues when i first told them that i was queer and uh but but over the years they've really just been like you know like this is not even an issue it's like we love you no matter what and they're just super super supportive mm -hmm. um and the town that i'm from in dover ohio has surprisingly become more progressive and it's less it's less ignorant i feel now mm -hmm. so um yeah a lot of people uh, you know 20 years ago they were saying really dumb stuff and i don't think they would say those same things now and i think a lot of people a lot of people where i'm from now truly don't care yeah you know they might they might have some sort of thoughts on it but like they're not gonna they're not gonna a, a lot of people I'm I you know since I've been back in Ohio I'm I'm surprised I'm pleasantly surprised at how many people where I'm from in Ohio are like you know they they truly don't don't care and do, so you, do, have, do you have siblings as well Brock or not I do yeah I have an older sister and a younger brother and I'm very close with both of them And um, um, when you came out, did something happen? It just felt like, okay, I'm just gonna be my true self now, and I'm just gonna uh, come out. Uh, I I was 19 years old, and I met somebody, and I uh, I just it was basically my first partner, mm -hmm. and so that that helped me gain the confidence to tell my family that I was, you know, dating a guy. Let's see, hey, yeah. Next question. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Um, question. Do, can you make up accents? Can I do accents? Yeah. Can you do accents, different accents, like British or East European or Southern? Can you or not? Oh. <laughs> Don't be uh, shy. <laughs> uh, I can do a Scottish accent. Great. So I'd like you to answer the next question with your best Scottish accent, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. All right. Next question for you is, how do you make friends? And you want me to do this in a Scottish accent? Yes, your best Scottish accent. How do I make friends? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I make friends. They just kind of <laughs> happen. Kind of happens organically. Uh, hey, so, I don't know. I, uh, I guess I make friends at the gym when I'm, when I'm lifting weights. Uh, <laughs> that's my, that's the best Scottish accent I can do. Amazing. Wow. All right. Thank, thank you. Um, uh, I was, I spent two months, I spent two months in Scotland doing a musical. So I, so everyone, everyone in the cast was, you know, spoke like that. I stayed in Edinburgh and, uh, they would, uh, they would just thought, yeah. Yeah. So I, I tried to pick up a little bit of, of the Scottish accent. Amazing. You said a word that straight away I connect as well. I have some uh, Scottish friends. When you said a word, I don't, I don't get it now, but you said a word, I was like, oh my God, that's perfect. <laughs> Good. Tell me something. I'm sure, that, I'm sure there's some Scottish people watching this just being like, oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Or they go like, oh, he's doing well. He's doing well. Yeah, I hope, hope so. <laughs> right. So tell me, uh, for your career in acting, tell me a moment that you're never going to forget. Yeah. A mom moment that you go like, you know what? I'm very proud of this moment or it's not unforgettable because something happened or because anything that happened through your career that it's kind of always, it, it will be always have a special place in your heart. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hmm. I guess it would be <clears throat> uh, the last movie that I did. No, no, no. A couple, two movies. I did. I did a movie back in November, mm -hmm. and with a really wonderful director named Sam Irvin. And uh, the last scene that we filmed of the entire shoot. It was the final day, the final scene. It was my scene. It was my dramatic monologue where I talk about my father who had died and. And it was a sad, it was a sad moment and I wanted to do it justice and I really wanted to be the best that I could be. And, and so I worked hard on that scene and I, 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 we did the scene and Sam, the director calls cut and he comes over and he's got tears in his eyes and he's like, I've got tears. You just made me cry. And I was like, yeah. Oh, so, wow. So that was a really, really beautiful moment. And and then right as we cut, that was when we finished the entire movie. And so Sam said this really nice words about me to the whole, like he sort of made a speech and he would just said, I just, this was Brock's first lead role in a feature film. Wow. And so that was a really, really nice thing for him to acknowledge and to say like, you know, Brock's been acting for a long time, but this was my, this was my first truly like the first time I've ever led a movie. And so he made me feel very, very special in that moment. And, um, and so that was a big, that was that, like, I'll always remember that moment of him, you know, doing, oh. doing really good, doing really good work. And then, you know, him saying, you know, acknowledging that really nice work. That was, that was, that meant a lot to me. Great. Very good. Three yeah. questions left. Let's do it. Mm. Okay. As you had a Brazilian boyfriend, did you learn any Braz any Portuguese a word or not? Good bem. There we go. How um, yeah. Hmm? Carry on, carry on. Pão de queijo. I love pão de queijo. Everyone so does. So good. Everyone does. So good. Uh, let's see. Obrigado. Okay. Uh, obrigado, tudo bem. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Okay. It was hard. It was tough. Portuguese is tough. <laughs> it was 
I'm usually pretty good at languages, but Portuguese for some reason just really, really escaped me. I see. Okay, yeah. next for you, we describe yourself in one positive word and one negative word only. Hmm. Positive word, I would say I'm empathetic. Mm -hmm. And a negative word, I would say I'm impatient. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Brock, saying that when you think about yourself and you analyze yourself, what's the best part of being you? What's the best part of being Brock? I don't know. I I I think I have a talent for leadership. I have a talent for um making people I, I think I have a I, I think I'm, I'm talented at making people feel seen and heard mm -hmm. and um, and I do my best to do that but I, I truly enjoy connecting with people emotionally sometimes I get too emotionally in, invested and I and I feel people's and that's, that's what I mean when I'm empath when I say I'm empathetic I um, I I feel people's pain um, sometimes a little too much and um, But for the most part, I definitely like, I think as an actor, that's my job is to, to be able to tap into other people's experiences and, and um, experience what they're experiencing and to feel what they're feeling. And so I, I take that, that trait that I have and I've turned it into a career. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes me a good actor. And I think that's one of the better parts, one of my better qualities. Tough question for you now. If someone come up to you and say, Brock, you have to choose only one career, acting or, you know, the fitness coaching all together. You cannot follow both anymore from now on. Which one would you choose? I couldn't give up acting. Okay. I'm, I'm an actor first, you know, I love fitness. I love the gym, but uh -huh. yeah, like I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't live without being on a movie set okay two yeah. questions left let's do it okay where's your moves come on show me a little bit of your dance no 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 i'll leave the dancing to you i can't dance <laughs> right before the next question when i was checking your website it says there discipline is the bridge between desire and results yeah Mm -hmm. I totally mm -hmm. agree with that. I think discipline, it's the key, you know, for anything in life. Everything you do, everything you, you know, you, you kind of want to get, discipline is the main key. Saying that, um, in your opinion, people, for some reason, they cannot follow the discipline. They kind of, you know, get a lack of it. They kind of let it go. What would be your advice for those people to kind of carry on with discipline? And... Um, For you, what's this, what means discipline for you? So two questions in one. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, you can't, you can't teach, you can teach somebody discipline, but you kind of can't. It's honestly up to them. You can't, mm -hmm. you can like lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. My right. biggest, my, my biggest piece of advice to somebody is to hire a coach. Honestly, when you're spending money, that's when you really take it seriously. I see. It's just how it is. You, you know, you can ask so many people ask me for free advice and I'm just like, you're not going to take any of this advice because you're not paying for it. I have hired coaches for the past six or seven years of my life. I have paid a friend of mine to take me to the gym and train me. And without that, without that student teacher relationship, you're not going to take it seriously. You're not going to go as hard as when you are paying for this. So I always tell people to hire a coach. If you really want to get serious and you really want to, you know, do that, that's what hiring a coach is all about. It's about that accountability. And um, some of my clients are very disciplined and they and they take it serious. And the other, a lot of them slack. And mm -hmm. I unfortunately I can't be there for you. I can't. Yeah. I can't force you to eat well. I can't force you to go to the gym. You have to want it yourself. It's just a matter of how much you want it. It's the same with acting. It's the same with, you know, some people will come up to me and they'll say, I think I kind of want to be an actor maybe. And I would just be like, you don't. <laughs> uh, um, like to have that kind of attitude, 
towards something that takes everything it's just you're not gonna you're not gonna get anywhere you have to completely commit to something in order to go somewhere with it so that's like what with when with with acting you know my suggestion is you got to move to new york or la you know you you have to completely immerse yourself in that world you have to go out of your way go take go sign up for acting classes you have to go you know go go out and take time out of your day and go network with people who are doing what you do you can't sit in the room and just wait around for it yeah you got to go you got to go make stuff happen yourself so yeah okay next question is if you could live anywhere in the world where that would be and why mm. i would like to live either london or paris i think those cities are really really beautiful and london is such a fun city and paris is so beautiful uh if i had to live somewhere else it would either be london or paris or yeah. dover or my home or my hometown in dover ohio i had a few guests I, actually dover in ohio on the show yeah yeah, yeah. i love dover i really really love my hometown i love being close to my family i love i love being out in the woods um so if i were to live in a small if i were to like i've lived in ohio i've i've been there and i i love like how calm it is um but i really also love Europe. I really love. I would I would love to, to live in a big beautiful European city. I've been I believe I've been in London before in Paris as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ready for the last question? Mhm. Do I dance a little bit? You dance. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. <laughs> My God, you had a Brazilian boyfriend and you don't dance. How it's possible? How is possible? I know. We. <laughs> I let him do it. <laughs> Before the last question, let's say let's let's do a, a game. Let's pretend that one of this biggest production, yeah, company, they call you and say, "Okay, Brock, come here. We, we have a deal with you. We have the biggest budget in the world that you can pay anyone. You got, you're gonna play. You're gonna put together a play or a scene or something that." You are in charge. You can choose anyone to be your mom, anyone to be your dad, anyone mm-hmm. to be your romantic partner, and also mm-hmm. you can pay any director to put all together the big boss. So mm-hmm. you have the biggest budget. So tell me who those people be. Mm. Okay, I would love to be directed by Darren Aronofsky. Um, do you know? No. <laughs> so, Jeffrey see Jeffrey see Black Swan? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I would love to either be directed by Darren Aronofsky or Quentin Tarantino. No, you cannot choose both. The budget's not that high. <laughs> I I'm, I'm going to pick both. One of the oh, Okay, so Darren Aronofsky or Quentin Tarantino, who would I pick? Oh man. It depends on uh. the in the in the scene or not. <laughs> I'm a, I'm going to go with Darren Aronofsky. Okay. I love Darren. I think he's such a great director. I would love for Nicole Kidman to play my mother. I knew it. I was about to say that. Of course. Of course. Um I I think I would love for Pedro Pascal to play he's I don't know if he's too young to play my father. He is too young to play my father. But he could play like my young young father. Like he's like he had a kid when he was like 14 15 yeah yeah you yeah. play like a young a young father you can play like my yeah yeah um and then i would love for jennifer lawrence to play my love interest wow my goodness no, that's I a love, big... i love jennifer lawrence i think she's so sexy see oh. see oh she's so sexy she's either she's... her or i love i love alexandra daddario mm. do you know who that is No, I'm not familiar. She was in Baywatch, she was in White Lotus, she was in the first season of White Lotus. She's got oh. she's a wonderful actress. She's got these piercing blue eyes. She's stunning. I would love to, I would love to work with her. 
and through the through the scene you you kind of realize that you're gay that you don't like women anymore who do you choose to be your lover i do love women i i do I'm not saying that you don't. I'm just saying that through the through the during the scene you change your. Oh, your, okay. So in the scene, in the scene, if, yeah, you became gay okay, and okay. you wanna you you fall in love to someone. Who that person would be? Hmm. Who would I? Who would play my male love interest? Um. Hmm. Is that difficult to find? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, of course, after Jen uh, Jennifer Lawrence, it's difficult to find that guy. She probably loved yeah. that guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't really have a lot of like male celebrity crushes. So I'll leave that one up to the director. I'll let I'll let him pick that. Very clever. I want to. I want to work with Jennifer. I want to work with J Law. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Last yeah. question for you, Viz. If you could have a superpower, what that would be and why? If I could have a superpower, um, I would like, I would like the power to to get animals away from bad owners. That's amazing. I never thought about that. Wow. I would love the power to just telekinetically get a dog out of a tied up chain of a backyard and just get him into a good home. That would be my superpower. Wow. You'll, you're and, they be get, and, and, and they can't say anything about it. You're going to become the biggest hero in the world for sure. Mm. I have a lot of support mm -hmm. out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. Okay, so the end yet. Let's play now the word association game. Okay, I'm going to give away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking, okay? Sure. You're not expecting that, were you? No. <laughs> okay, easy. So, I hope you are enjoying the interview. Before we do the word association game, don't forget to give a like. Don't forget to share this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the bottom right there. Thank you so much and enjoy the word association game. Easy. One word for family. Love. Money. Not enough. Okay. <laughs> One word for love. One word for love. Um, security. Life. For life. Um, gratitude. Sex. Uh, a, a lot. <laughs> Much. Mucho. Bueno. Muito. In Portuguese, muito. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Politics. Um, muito. I'm no, joking. <laughs> yeah, no, in, nada, no interest. Nada. Nada. <laughs> nada. The opposite. Nada. Yeah. <laughs> Religion. Uh... Mm. Muito. Mm. <laughs> no. Religion. Bad. <laughs> bad. How do you say bad in Spanish? Mal. Mal. Portuguese as well. No, uh, no bueno. <laughs> one word for fear. Fear. Um, one word for fear. Uh, Uh, in one word for fear. Bueno. Um, insecure, <laughs> it's insecure, insecurity. I don't know. What's, okay. yeah. Okay. Friendship. Uh, trust. Desire. Desire. Uh, desire. Mal. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Just... <laughs> desire. I don't know. Um, Pão de queijo. Pão de queijo. Pão de queijo. Pão de queijo. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Regret. 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 Oh, man. Um, Regret. It's silly. Stupid. Don't have regrets. Okay. Success. 
love. Wish. 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 Disney. I think of Disney. Okay. Happiness. Uh. Uh, happiness is not is not um it doesn't one exist word. one word <laughs> non-existent <laughs> and I, and let me just say this because i because i don't believe i don't believe when we say happiness i don't think it's like what well, people say like are you happy i think there's many things like what does that mean what does that mean happiness are you satisfied are you content are you at peace are you you know like happy what does happy mean I don't, I, th I think there's better words for happy. So I don't truly think that happiness, you know, happiness is a moment to moment emotion. And I don't think that's, that's sustainable. Do, do, so, do you believe that happiness is a choice? Sure. Okay. I, but I also think like happiness is like not a real thing. I think there are other things that are more real than happiness. Like I said, like, I think contentment is is real i think gratitude is real i think um satis being satisfied with what you have is real happy it's like what does happy look like you know are you happy it's like yeah sure i'm happy but i'm also what does that mean that means that i'm i'm okay with what i have or i'm you know so that's that's why that's what i think about happiness one word for ohio Woods. One word for New York City. Hard. <laughs> Difficult. Wow, and get more. Difficult. Hard. Unbearable. Unbearable. <laughs> Stinky. Sweaty. I, I, I have a, I had a lovely man. He was living in New York for uh, for so many years, and he said, "Filthy." <laughs> I love it. Filthy. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> One word for LA. Sunny. One word for USA. For the USA? Yeah. Oh, I don't have a word for the USA. I don't know. I, I got a lot of words for the USA. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's home. Okay. <laughs> Very soft. Home. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that one. I got a lot of... <laughs> A lot of conflicting ideas. One word for coach. For what? Coach. Coaching. Co coach. Results. And the last one now, acting. One word. Hard. <laughs> Hard, unbearable feel of joy. Yeah. 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 Hard. Right, let's let's pretend now I'm going to meet your lovely uh, boyfriend or partner for a coffee, and I'm going to ask him, what's the most beautiful thing about Brock, and what's something that he still needs to work on to improve on, what he would say? Uh, I would say, my partner would say, he would say that I'm, I'm very compassionate, mm -hmm. and I'm very, um, I'm very emotionally in tune, to him and I'm very uh, supportive. Something that I need to work on. Mm -hmm. Probably be my Probably to to live less in fear, mm -hmm. and to live a little bit more in like and like joy and appreciation and love, and not live so fear based. Because I do have some of those fears that I have, some insecurities that I have creep up, and uh, and I try I'm, I'm trying to to not let them creep up and not let them ruin a good thing. Where does this fear come from? Oh God, I think everything, all that stuff goes back to our childhood. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, like, I have no, I don't know. Just 
yeah, stuff we've been through as kids that we kind of still hold on to as adults. Right. So, yeah. I think all of us, we have that. We have somehow you grow up, but still you carry somehow. You work on it. Yeah. You kind of try to understand or to work on it, but it's still there somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's play now Brock in the Magic Box and you can ask me a question. Right, before you ask me the question, what is your favorite Spanish word? My favorite Spanish word? <laughs> I can't think of one. <laughs> uh... I like the word for lobster, langosta. Ah, interesting. In Portuguese, you yeah. say almost the same. You say lagosta in Portuguese. Lagosta. Yeah. Yeah. I've always loved it. Langosta. Yeah. Okay. You can ask me a question now. What What inspired you to start interviewing people? Good question. You know, the war, when the world went upside down in 2020, when, you know, everything literally turned around and nobody knew what was happening you know a lot of things a lot of people they were you know lost they they didn't know what was happening the whole world the uncertainty some people they didn't like at all of us didn't know um at the same time as well i believe that a lot of people they found a way to live to think that was maybe hidden somewhere people they, they, they became very creative you know things that mm -hmm. uh, i remember like online coaching doing their class online a lot of things happening. And uh, for me, uh, here in England, in London, um, at the time you could leave the house once a day for exercise, like outdoors, yeah? And uh, I was going for a run every every evening, like in the afternoon, late afternoon, I was going for a run. And I was already thinking about doing something where I could connect with people, where I could, you know, express myself, but I didn't know how. I didn't know how to put all together. I went for a run in the park. As you say in the beginning of the interview, you said about when you work out, when you do exercise, you know what I mean? It, it changes your life. You start thinking more straight, you know, you, you start to come up with new ideas. I went for a run in the park and literally this idea came along. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to create questions. I'm going to research some questions where I can connect with people, where people can express themselves, they can express, they can answer random questions. And let's see how it goes. And that's how it started. But saying that <clears throat> through my life as a teenager or even, you know, when I go on vacation with friends, there was always a moment I was like, oh, who was your favorite teacher? Or what was your favorite color? I always had this interaction, you know? So my friends, when they watch the show, they go like, oh my God, I can see you like in, in holiday, in, in vacation with us, like doing this interaction because it's, mm -hmm. it's something that's always been doing. And of course not in, a, in a, such a bigger proportion with people around the world, but, Friends who knows me very well, they can see me like doing those interaction with it. Just interact with people. Funny enough, last time I went to Brazil, I was uh, on vacation and my best friend who lives in Canada, he came along as well. And we met, uh, this was before COVID, we met a group of uh, friends, uh, French people, they were there. And uh, we connect, everyone went for dinner. We were like a group of eight people. And I remember I started at one point to start drinking. I was like, oh, what's the best part of living in Paris? What's the, your favorite French, this kind of like question. And this, this lovely girl, she came up to me, said, William, literally, she just met me like the day before, said, William, I don't know why, but I feel like I could tell you anything. I feel so, like, so, uh, I don't know, I, I trust the way you, you talk, the way you interact with people. I felt like I could tell you any secrets, any secrets, because you were doing this game with us. And I felt so relaxed. I felt so, and I was like, oh my God, that's, that's so nice to hear from a, a stranger, someone who I just met, yeah. like, you know? And actually people here on the show, they say the same. I receive like message, I receive like emails from people. They go like, William, I never, I never told anyone about my first love, about my first crush. I never talked to mm -hmm. anyone. And somehow, talking to you, I forgot. I just felt like safe. I felt like I could talk about that. Anyway, so that's the, how everything started. But I didn't think the show would go that direction. For me, it was just to have fun. My first idea was like, okay, like in the spot. Answer a question in the spot. Let's see what people are going to say in the spot. Mm -hmm. But it went in a direction where people, they were sharing personal events. They were sharing 
like secrets that they never shared before. And that's when the, 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 the show went this direction that I was expecting. So it's fascinating to see so many people, you know, express themselves, sharing stories as you're talking about your challenge in the past. And it's so nice to hear that because somehow you're helping people. People watch the interview. They might connect with you. They go like, oh my God, I never, I never, I, I didn't know that maybe someone went the same situation not just challenge but mm -hmm. happiness as well some people they like to hear people you know expressing their happiness moments and they connect somehow yeah. as well anyway back to, back to your question everything started through a run in the park and literally i i was asking myself in my life what i came to this world for and i'll tell you brock the same passion you have for acting the same passion I have for doing the show. I could do that for 24 hours because you know the feeling, yeah? You know the feeling when you are there, yeah, in the stage yeah. or in, you know, in sets. You know the feeling. So that's the feeling I have when I'm connected with, you know, someone in the interview. So yeah, that's my answer yeah. to you. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks so much for taking the time. I know you're a busy man and take thanks. When actually, when I send you a message, I send a message to you know random people. Yeah, and sometimes I don't look properly in their profile. And when I send a message to you, I didn't think you would reply to me. And when I saw your reply, I was like, oh, that's interesting. He replied to me. Yeah. I was like, wow, amazing, amazing. Yeah, and of thanks course. For, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for being so sweet and down to earth. Absolutely. You know, it's it's amazing to to connect with someone and um, yeah, thanks so much for taking the time. But before you go, if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by in Spanish. I'm <laughs> joking, I'm joking, yeah, I'm joking. In no, Spanish, no, yeah. yeah. I'm joking. Oh man, uh, a positive message. I don't I don't know if this is positive, but, but this is really what I've learned and uh, just recently I think it's important, like what, like I, I said this before, I said this earlier in the podcast, but it's important. I, it, this helped me a lot um, to not have an opinion about things you can't change. Hmm. I think that really helped me um, stop getting so negative about things that, that were out of my control. And it's like, that really helped me um, gain some freedom and to let go a little bit and to just go with the flow to to be a little bit easier and you know like the this this guy that i listened to talks about stoicism as a philosophy and he said you know it's, it's going to start raining and you can't do anything to stop the rain so getting upset about the rain is pointless it's a waste of time and energy what you need to focus on is now what do i do because of it's because it's raining and so that has really, really helped me. Um, anytime something uh, I face an obstacle or something happens, I just say, don't have an opinion about something you can't change. And that's really helped me ease yeah. up a little bit. And if it's raining a lot, just go and dance in the rain and you're gonna change there you go. your mood. Yeah, gonna dance there. You're gonna see how the, the rain is gonna change your mood. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day and keep in touch, Brock. It was a pleasure, okay? Thank you very much. Likewise. Thank you okay. so much for having me. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.